Zack Snyder's Justice League comes out on March 18th, 2021. So in celebration, we here at the Cinefanatics are going to rank all of the DCEU superheroes over the course of the next four hours. There's only like 14 of them. We're gonna rank all top 10 of the DCEU superheroes over the course of the next 18 minutes and 35 seconds. Hmm. Nailed it. My man. What's going on, guys? We're the Cine Fanatics. My name's Chris Adams. And I'm Robert Adams. And we are once again celebrating the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League finally coming out. It's been like years and like just a tumultuous ride on the internet trying to get that thing to happen. Hashtag release the Snyder cut. It's happening. It's finally happening. And in order to celebrate, we are ranking the top 10 DC superheroes. We narrowed the list down incredibly from the multitude of heroes on the in the DC EU. Anyway. The great thing about this is, is that you are on this channel right now and we talk about movies on this channel and we're going to be talking about movies again next week as we're going to have a review for the Snyder Cut as well as our next ranking video, which is going to be the top, I guess, nine DCEU movies. There's only nine in existence. We might as well just rank those nine. Yeah. All sorts of stuff happening on this channel in order to celebrate. We're also going to be doing a watch along of the original Justice League that's going to be free for everybody on this channel. Yeah. However, this list, this one, is made up of our opinions. We are really ranking this based on the heroics of these characters within the movie so far and how we feel about it, and I guess in relation to their actual characters and everything. Either way, our list is going to look different than yours, so let us know what your list is down in the comments, and go ahead and hit that like no matter what. It really helps us out. Let's move on to our list, though. At number 10 is Black Canary. <laughs> From Birds of Prey. Ah! The heck is that? Supersonic voice. That's a god awful canary. <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, Birds of Prey uh, was uh, was a movie that was thrown together mainly around Harley Quinn, but one of the standouts of that was Black Canary. Uh, she was an enforcer for Roman Sionis in this movie, and essentially ended up proving that she really did have like a heart of gold, that she really wanted to be on the side of right, and teams up with the other uh, Birds of Prey to form the team. Uh, like... I kind of like her character development in this, that she was kind of like the loner, leave me alone, I don't want to bother with any of this, but then she ends up becoming like someone that is, is, is she's fighting for the little person essentially, she's yeah. pulling a Captain America and she really does want to help out in the end. I like her character, the development for that, and it's kind of like different from like where you've got in the comics. Uh, so it's a nice little twist in her, and I think they did a very good job with her. I get why they call them Birds of Prey now. Uh huh. She's a bird. Got it. At number nine, it's Flash. So here's the great thing about Flash. He came in, he's a superhero, he learned how to be a superhero from Batman. He was pushing the Russian family out of the way, part of the original Justice League. And yeah, that's about it. He's got a movie coming out, and that's, that's all you're going to see of Flash. Moving on. At number eight, it's Diablo. <laughs> hey, did you think you were going to see members of the Suicide Squad on this list? Let's be honest, the DCEU right now is very short on actual legitimate heroes, so we're going to pull in some of the characters from, you know, Suicide Squad, because they're heroic in the movie. Some of them are pretty he heroic, yeah. Specifically Diablo, though, he is somebody who had to make up, essentially, for the fact that he unfortunately killed his family with his superpowers of pyrokinesis, being able to produce fire, fire off fire, shoot fire, do all sorts of fun things with fire. <laughs> fire! Fire! So the thing about him and why he's on this list is if you go back to Suicide Squad, he did actually sacrifice himself. He became his giant demonic fire self in order to stall Incubus and for that bomb that they were planting underneath to take them out. And that is something that you only find really in a hero. I mean, he straight up just gave in and sacrificed himself when throughout the all the rest of the movie, he really wasn't wanting to use his power, only did so when Deadshot kind of coaxed him into it. So this is why he's on this list. This is why I say like he's one of the biggest heroes of Suicide Squad and why he even makes this top 10. Because he was willing to sacrifice himself for the betterment of all. And he's a twisted five starter. 
Twisted Fire Starter. Coming in at number seven is Harley Quinn. Yes. Speaking of Suicide Squad characters, we're also including Harley Quinn on here because let's be honest. I, and I know, I know, I know. Uh, quick background. I grew up on Batman the Animated Series. I know of Harley Quinn. I am a big Harley Quinn fan. I know she is a villain for the most part. We're talking about the DCEU, though. She really hasn't been a villain in these movies. She's more of like the anti-hero, anti She's only had heroics so far. Yeah, she's, she really hasn't done anything extremely villainous. We've just seen her locked up in a cage at the beginning of Suicide Squad and told that she's bad. Therefore, she deserves a place on this list. Now, where she's going to be going forward if they continue to make these movies, like, say, the next Suicide Squad movie, who knows? But as of right now, through the two movies that we've seen her in so far... She's been a hero, so we have to stick with that. She's done a good job helping to defend the city in Suicide Squad and then also really bringing in and wrangling in the Birds of Prey in the Birds of Prey and that long title that I'm not going to repeat because I just don't have time. Anyways, Harley Quinn's done a fantastic job in these movies so far, and I kind of like to see if they maybe might go into the villainous side of her, but if they decide to keep her as kind of like this anti-hero thing, that'd be fantastic and I'm all for it. That movie was called Harley Quinn and the promotion of egg sandwiches for people's breakfasts everywhere. Ain't that right, Puddin? That does sound delicious. Puddin? At number six, it's Cyborg. Great thing about Cyborg and why he's here is, one, he is a huge key to the events of Justice League, to beating Steppenwolf. I mean, he is mostly made up of a mother box, the power from the mother boxes. They are what kind of formed him and, and kind of created his cybornetic, what's the word? I don't know. He was created by mother. He was, yes, mother, if it pleases mother. Uh, yeah, so Cyborg was really one of like the main heroes, one of the main elements to Justice League and being able to take down Steppenwolf. On top of that, his his heroic side was that he had to step out of the shadows, embrace who he was now, and let that be what guides him into being a superhero. Much like Ray Fisher is also stepping out of the shadows, embracing who he is now, and letting that guide him to being a superhero that's saving all of Hollywood. Accountability over entertainment. Coming in at number five is Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. Shazam. Yeah, uh, like Gomer Pyle, uh, this would be Shazam, who was actually known as Captain Marvel, but due to some messy copyright names between all the comic books and nerdy stuff, uh, the movie we got is called Shazam, the character is called Shazam, so that's what we're gonna call him moving forward. Uh, this was actually a really good movie, and like, I was kind of surprised by how how the character was developed. It was a bit on the silly side, while Captain Marvel, Shazam, is generally more of a serious, stoic, uh, Superman-like character. This character did really good in the fact that, I mean, they d definitely played it from him being a kid, becoming the hero that he needs to be being worthy of being that superhero. And then on top of that, one of the things I really liked was how he really brought his family in uh, there at the end of the movie and was really uh, someone who was not trying to really find a permanent home, found his family and found his permanent home. So he was not only a hero to all of us, but a hero to his new family as well. I love the character development of it and I thought fantastic, fantastic hero. It's always room for family. No, not Fast and Furious. Coming in at number four, it's Awkward Man. I mean, Aquaman. Yeah, so this might come as a surprise because our reaction to the extended trailer for Aquaman uh, garnered probably the best dislike to like ratio ever on this channel. Uh, so therefore, really, we're trying to show y'all we do like Aquaman. We do like the character. So we rank him at number four on this list. Suck it, nerds. All that aside, we are still a family channel. Uh, the thing about Aquaman is that he is... He's a loner of a character. And so putting him this high on the list means that we're looking at the aspects of Aquaman being that loner, not really wanting to step into that role of being king of Atlantis and being the hero that he should be. Uh, more so just trying to do his own thing, kind of forget his history, his past. But at the same time, he's got a kingdom to protect. He's got a kingdom to to essentially be the hero of. 
And in order to do that, you know, looking at his half brother Orm, mm -hmm. and you know what he's trying to pull all the dictatorship type stuff that he's trying to rule over the kingdom with. Uh, there's a lot that Aquaman had to get over about himself. Essentially, he had to wash away his pride, so to speak, and really step into that role. And there's there's something to that effect, especially for a character like him, who's kind of who's still like super bro, bro, yeah. I think his greatest heroic feat was making a decent Aquaman movie. Speaking of ruling underwater kingdoms, we have a Patreon full of tears that you can just dive right into. Like it. Yeah, I approve. Right? That includes a Discord with a movie-loving community that we're trying to build over there. We've got watch-alongs that we're doing every month. We've got movie trivia nights, all sorts of stuff, including even bonus footage. After these videos are done, we keep the camera rolling, and you get to see kind of our thought processes into building these lists, as well as the bloopers that contain the 18 different ticks it took me to do this exact promo. All that available for you over on our Patreon. Pick the tier that's right for you. Jump in there today. Dive in there. Whatever you want to do. Let's get back to the ranking. At number three is Batman. The Dark Knight. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. You probably already know what our top three were going to be, but you didn't necessarily know the order, and I'm pretty sure most of y'all are really curious as to why Batman's only number three on this list. Well, there's a good reason for that. Take it away, brother. <laughs> See, Batman is somebody who would normally be in the top two, but he's also somebody that hasn't really done a whole lot in the DCEU yet. And as of right now, we don't know how much more he's going to be able to do, at least as Ben Affleck anyway. Uh, he is on this list. He is at nearing the top, though, just because kind of putting together the Justice League, it's, it's a big deal. So being able to form them together, being able to pull them from their different corners and really unite them, is what gives Bruce Wayne, Batman, this ranking on the list. You have stuff to add too, right? Uh, I absolutely do. So the thing is, is when we first catch up with uh, Batfleck in, in the DCEU, he's already coming in in the Batman vs. Superman as kind of like a tortured person. He's already had like a huge back history of the stuff that we would have liked to have seen in a movie, but <laughs> we just didn't get. And that's what's built him to be the person that he is when we first get introduced to him. So the thing I like about him is that we do see through Ben Affleck's performance that this Batman is a tortured soul that he has gone through like all this pain and everything and that has shaped the hero that he is now and I like seeing kind of seeing that a lot of the stuff I would say in this past is stuff we're already familiar with Batman we know his parents get killed in the alley behind a movie theater it, it, like common knowledge here it's like seeing Spider-Man's origin over and over again doesn't really matter but we see we go straight jumping into the tortured soul of Bruce Wayne in this and I like seeing that and how he grew from that in these movies so yeah I think he's 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 very much a strong hero in these movies without really doing that much but the formation of the Justice League that was probably like the thing that really helps with this no we're forgetting the most important thing it's the fact that he saved Martha oh that's right coming in at number two is Wonder Woman that's right Wonder Woman's on this list, believe it or not. No, here's the thing. The great thing about Wonder Woman and why she's on this list, besides the fact that she's Wonder Woman, is the fact that she is as selfless as they come. She had paradise, essentially, on Themyscira, not needing to really worry about anything in the world, but she chose to leave that paradise, insert herself into the wars of man that she didn't need to be a part of at all, because she knew that she could make a difference and hopefully in doing so would lead to Ares and hopefully ending war and trouble all over the world. That is, that's a huge deal for somebody of her status, essentially being the daughter of Zeus, to be able to leave aside just absolute paradise, everything, like, I don't need to go be a part of anything, I don't need to do any of that, to, I, I can make a difference. I can step in and I can do what needs to be done. Yeah, the other thing I like about her character, and this is where I'm going to touch upon the, the second Wonder Woman movie, 1984, is in the first movie, she really didn't have a choice about Steve Trevor. He kind of just sacrificed himself. Yeah. In 1984, she actually did have a hand in the, the decision to let Steve Trevor go because she had to undo that wish, basically, uh, for everything to succeed in her favor, basically.
a huge amount of growth for that character. That's why she's at number two on this list. At number one, it's faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Yeah, so Superman was a fan. Uh, I mean, Superman's number one. Before I even say anything, just uh, Superman's number one. Why wouldn't he be? He's essentially, I'm going to compare it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's like Iron Man, the one that kicked off the whole thing that a lot of it was really anchored around for the most part. Uh, Superman was the, was the bottom rung of this entire universe. And, like, even Justice League, a lot of that movie is built upon trying to bring Superman back so they could solve everything. But the thing about Superman in the DCEU that I really liked is he does have that weakness about him. Like, he's not the all-powerful Superman that you knew from the comics or even the previous Superman movies. This Superman is flawed and is very well portrayed by Henry Cavill in these movies. I love the way that they, they've carried him through this so far, and I'm really sad we didn't get a Man of Steel 2. Yeah, I'm also kind of bummed that we're not getting a Man of Steel 2, or at least right now anyway. We'll see. Uh, come back to this video in the future if we do happen to get one. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh... The thing, though, that is notable about Superman is, as you were saying, as we were talking about Superman, he he is a more flawed version of the character than we necessarily see in the comics a lot. This is a Superman that is that is troubled with the fact that he is coming up against Zod. He's coming up against somebody who is from his planet. And the fact that Zod is willing to stop at nothing but to destroy everybody and take over Earth and make that the new Krypton, essentially... Superman was left with no choice but to kill him. And and here's the thing. We don't see a Superman kill really ever in almost any other medium. So to be able to see that happen cinematically in a movie and that be the situation, the jumping point for him, where he kind of learns that that's not something I want to do ever again. I don't want to... That's 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 not a resort I want to... Not even my last one. I, don't even, I just don't want to come back to that situation. So it, it was cool to see that, that development go from there to Batman versus Superman, where we find out, yes, he does bleed. Thank you for asking, Bruce. And even into Justice League, having to just fight through his pain and struggle uh, after having been brought back and regroup. All right, I'm a hero. Let's save the day. Just a whole lot to really like about Superman, like about Henry Cavill as Superman. And man, I just, I really wish we could get more from him. Anyways, that's going to do it for this list. What do y'all think of our list? Let us know down below. Where did your favorites land at? Were they higher, lower? Just let us know. We want to talk about it down in the comments, so that's the best place to put those opinions, right down there in the comments. And remember, jump on our Patreon. We're doing all sorts of stuff over there. And remember to come back next week. We're going to be ranking the DCEU movies as well as doing a watch-along to the original Justice League. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at MLP. I'm specifically at Chris Adams MLP, and he's at Robert Adams MLP. You can do that all that on the social medias. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Give us a like and subscribe. You can hit subscribe by hitting the subscribe button down below or the subscribe button that's right up here above our heads. Over here off to the side are a couple other videos that we've made. And as always, I hear you can talk to fish. Suck it, nerds.